everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today I'm going to be talking about filament drying and also testing out and reviewing the Ibis Polyphemus filament dryer. So first off, starting with the basics. Do I need to be drying my filament? Now this question really heavily depends on what type of filament you use. So for me, I'll say certain materials like TPU, PVA, it is absolutely necessary in my experience to dry those materials. They're very susceptible to absorbing moisture in the air, and that moisture can really affect the quality of your prints. Other materials like PLA and ABS, I will say completely honestly, I don't normally dry those filaments. I know it's probably really bad, but even when they've been sitting out of the plastic for a while, I typically don't dehydrate them. And that's kind of something that I really want to test today with this filament dryer. I want to see, does it actually make a tangible, physical, structural difference in my prints between undried and dried filament? So we'll get to that in a little bit. Ibis sent me this dehydrator to try out. And so today I'm going to be testing it for you guys and telling you guys what I think about it. Do I recommend it? This dryer has a lot of really cool features that I'm excited to test. Full disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Ibis, but just like any of my other review videos or products that I mention, I would never say something that I don't actually truly honestly believe. And Ibis has given me full reign to test this however I like and to give my honest opinion to you all. And also Ibis has generously given me another Polyphemus filament dryer to give away to one of you. All you have to do to enter is click the link down in the description. It is completely free to enter and one of you will win a Polyphemus like I said, if you print with TPU or PVA or a material like that, a filament dryer is 100% necessary. The big question that I want to find out in this video is if it's actually really necessary for more common filaments like PLA. But regardless, one of these filament dryers is going to be absolutely awesome for your workshop. All the details about how to enter and when the winner will be selected will be down there. But let's talk real quick about what kinds of things you might see on your prints if your filament is wet. Number one, rough surface. The actual surface of your prints might look uneven, it might look rough. Stringing is another big thing, especially especially with filaments like TPU that can happen. A lot of people chalk up stringing in TPU to temperature or flow rate or retraction settings, but I've found in my experience that drying your filament can actually make the biggest difference in reducing stringing. With any of these filaments, it might be a sign that it's wet if you can hear sizzling or popping noises as it's going out the hot end. And that's the moisture in the filament that's getting heated up and creating those sounds. So if you've been struggling with any of those problems with your prints, you might need to get your hands on a dehydrator. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, I just want to say this was super easy to set up. I appreciate that the panels came disassembled to save on packing space, and it took me all of about five minutes to put together. Just a quick walkthrough of the UI. This is what it looks like when it's just in idle mode, but once it's turned on, you'll see all of these settings. It's not as complex as it looks because the machine has a bunch of presets for filament type that automatically change the target temperature, time, all that. As you can see, it's on PLA mode right now, and it's set to dry this filament for four hours. And you have the little timer clock down here in the corner telling you how long is left. All you do to use this machine is just place your spool on the rollers, select the material type, I'm starting out with PLA so I have it set to PLA, place the cover on, and let it work its magic. You can turn the rotation on or off by pressing this button. I do recommend to keep them on so that your filament is dehydrated evenly. While it's operating, keep the vent at the top open, but later when your filament is done and just sitting in the compartment, you can close it. Alright guys, for this first test, I'm going to be using Ibis's own filament. This is their matte PLA. Besides just taking it out of the packaging, I have not done anything to this. For this first test print, I'm doing this cute little battery pack. I chose this one because it's a very simple design. It's kind of cylindrical, so you can really see the surface texture over those flat areas and around the curves. And I'm going to print this first with this roll. Same exact slicing settings for everything. Same speed, temperature, layer height. I'm literally just going to print the same G-code twice. Once right now and once after I dry this filament. So for all of these tests, I'm going to be using my Bamboo X1 Carbon. All right, so there it is. And I actually took off the whole AMS from the top just so that it's out of the way because we're not using it. Okay, so now that we have the PLA all loaded up, we are going to start our first test print. Mm -hmm. 
So this first print actually came out okay. The surface is not great, but there's no serious issues. The waves you see on this one side are not because of the filament. This was an issue with my belt tension. I'm gonna wait to fix it until after the second print just so everything is consistent. But yeah, let's dry out this filament for four hours and see what difference it makes. On the second print, there's not really a huge difference, to be honest. The filament had only been left out in the open for about a week, so maybe a bigger difference could be seen with more time for moisture to absorb. I will say though, I am seeing slight differences, especially around the Z-seam, but I'm going to do a closer analysis at the end. This is just my first observations. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that there are a couple filament brands, really only like one or two that I've tried that just have consistently given me a ton of grief. So for this next test, I'm going to be trying specifically with one of those brands. I am not going to name names, um, but this filament, it just always makes the print surface really rough. There's a lot of oops. right but I've done a lot of experimenting with this filament and I just cannot get it to come out nice and smooth like most of the other ones that I use so for this next test I'm using their light gray PLA this is a roll that I've done like one small print with um, but yeah it's been sitting out of the plastic for like maybe a week now but the small print that I did do before with this was straight out of the plastic and it still gave me a pretty rough surface so we're gonna see if using the polyphemus filament dryer makes any difference whatsoever on this filament so this is the little end piece that I just cut off when I had to load it into the machine. And as you can see, this filament is pretty brittle, which is another sign that it's been sitting out, that there is possible moisture and humidity inside the filament. That's definitely not good, and I don't have very high hopes for this print I'm about to do. This first print is what I expected. Even with new rolls of filament of this brand, I tend to get rough surfaces like this. I don't know if it's actually the filament quality or just how it's transported, maybe it's not sealed well, I don't know. But you can see a lot of surface roughness and unevenness. Yeah, it's not good. Now I'm just gonna put this in the polyphemus for four hours. We're gonna dehydrate it and then print the same G-code again and we'll see how it looks. Okay, honestly, I am shocked. This print came out so much smoother. It's a world of difference from the first print and I was honestly really not expecting this. Again, I'm gonna analyze this closer in a second, but when I say I was shocked when I took this out of the printer, I mean it. Okay, so this is the last filament that I'm gonna be testing for this video. This is just a regular generic brand TPU from Amazon. And I've only printed with this roll once before. This has honestly been out of the plastic for a long time. Like I wanna say it's just been sitting in my closet like this for two or three months. I'm really not expecting this first print to be good at all. TPU is way more sensitive to moisture absorption than filaments like PLA. So yeah, I'm expecting this first print to be pretty bad. And I was right. The first print had crazy stringing, oozing. It's a mess. Now I really want to see how efficient the polyphemus is at drying out TPU with four hours of dehydrating time. So let's test it out and then run that same G-code again. The second print is way cleaner. There's still a little bit of stringing, but honestly, this is what I expect from a good solid TPU print. All right, so now that our testing is done, let's take a look at our prints and let's talk about them. So test print number one, that was our little battery holder. Honestly, I did not see a huge difference in surface roughness. 
These two prints have pretty equal visible striations. This was the Ibis Green PLA. I will say neither of these actually came out as smooth as I thought they would, which totally might not have anything to do with the filament itself. It could just be my settings. The thing that I'm actually looking at is the fact that they are pretty consistent between the two, between the undried and the dried filament. I will say the one place I do see a difference is with the Z-seam. I purposefully did not randomize it so that I could see it very clearly. And I will say the before one, the one that was not dehydrated, the Z-seam does look a bit more prominent. And that sort of oozing, over-extrusion, globbing effect can be a symptom of wet filament. So I would say the dryer actually did help that part a bit. But yeah, just looking at surface roughness, they are pretty comparable to me. So I'm actually gonna say if you are using a good quality PLA, dehydrating might not make as big of a difference as you might hope. Now test number two, um, this was the PLA that I don't really love and I've had a lot of problems with in the past. This test actually kind of blew my mind. I can see such a difference between the before and after. Like the surface roughness on the first one is so apparent and this is the exact problem that I've been struggling with with this filament. And the after still definitely has some issues but it is much smoother. Like the difference between these two is really, really apparent. So I will say if you have a particular brand of filament that you have been struggling with that causes problems, that gives you rough surfaces, it might need dehydrating. Like I did nothing different between these two prints and they look like completely different settings. And I'm actually really happy about this because I have like 10 rolls of this particular filament that I just have not been able to use because of the issues. So now I can dehydrate it and actually use it. So yes, for this one, the Polyphemus made a huge difference. And lastly, the third test, this is the TPU. Because TPU is much more susceptible than filaments like PLA to absorbing moisture in the air. And the roll that I used had been sitting out for a long time. So I knew the first print was gonna come out terribly. And yeah, as you can see, the first print has really bad stringing has some zits, has some globs, but the second print changing no settings, no temperature, no retraction differences. This one looks so much better. There's still a little bit of stringing. With TPU, stringing is really hard to totally eliminate. You have to be really, really dialed in. But from just dehydrating this filament for four hours, it is a world of difference. But yeah, once again, I already knew that this was gonna make a big difference. This test really just confirms that this works efficiently, does what it's supposed to, and it does its job really well. Overall, I really like this machine. Like I said, it performs really well. The design is really sleek, compact. I love the built-in rollers so that it can automatically rotate your filament so that everything gets dehydrated evenly. Ibis claims that the fans are silent, and I can honestly say that that is true. It's really quiet. Like, I would have no issue having this on my desk. I will say when you have the rollers on, it does make some noise, but if you are somebody who has 3D printers at home, it's nothing compared to that. I like that it can hold two rolls at once, but it is sort of annoying, I think, that the roll has to at least be this size spool if you're going to use the rollers. Smaller spools are not gonna work in this. So I do think that's one con. And I really like that it comes with a bunch of preset filament types. So it was like TPU, PLA, ABS, like those settings are already pre-programmed in here. With regards to the actual effect it has on your prints, I would say that if you're using a pretty high quality PLA or ABS already, and it's a filament that hasn't given you a ton of issues, I don't know if it's going to make that big of a difference for you. But if you have a PLA or ABS that consistently gives you rough surfaces, as I've discovered in this video, it could very well be chalked up to moisture. So if that's you, I would say this is totally worth it. And again, TPU, PVA, other materials that really absorb the moisture in the air, a filament dryer is a must. And I can honestly say if you're gonna invest in a good one, the Polyphemus is a great option. So thank you guys so much for following along with this video, with this testing and review. I had a really fun time. I love this kind of video. And remember once again that I'm giving away one of these Polyphemus dryers to one of you. All of the info on how to enter is down in the description. So make sure you get your entries in ASAP and you could win a brand new filament dryer for your workshop. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!